dissertation on the right to counsel of choice, I can just about guarantee you that no one has published information like this. And if they have you have my word I ain't never heard nobody come close to saying anything like this. Many of you are trying to figure out how to get through the court system. With all of their words and their changing of words, and their playing around with legal terminology and English words and Latin words, you can't understand all that junk. So let's see if we can help you with the simplest response you can give to the police if they were to try to arrest you. Or to a judge who's sitting up there attempting to arrange you or put you through some legal simulated process, or a probation department. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone knows that in the United States and in every country associated with the United Nations a person has the right to be represented by counsel? You all are saying at this time yeah, and so. Well, that's your solution. Okay that's it, that's the new information, I hope this proved very helpful. You'll say, helpful, you didn't give us anything. And they will simply say I gave you everything, the kitchen sink, and they also gave you a college graduate degree in law. You will say you ain't gave us nothing but wasting our time. And they will say oh really, so if a police officer pulls me over and asked me for my identification, and I simply asked him, I'm sorry officer, are you conducting an investigation at this time? No matter what his answer is, I must apologize to you as this appears to be a legal matter and I cannot speak with you without my attorney present. No, you will only go through this part of the conversation if there is the likelihood of arrest. If there is no likelihood of arrest you simply let him know that you do not wish to participate in his investigation nor do you wish to be a party to his investigation. That you do not wish to provide evidence against yourself and it is a violation of the restrictions on government to force someone to be a witness against themselves. Then you will simply say officer, are you trying to get me to offer up testimony against myself to help you in the course of your investigation? And let the conversation go from there because you've already told him no you are not willing to offer up any evidence against yourself willingly. And if he asks you for your identification and registration and insurance, please keep in mind that he asked you for your property, you simply say to him, I'm sorry officer is that in order? Are you commanding me to surrender to you my identification, proof of insurance for my automobile, and my registration? It matters not what his response is at that time, because you will simply say okay since you have that gun and in fear of my life I will give these to you. Again it doesn't matter what they say at this point, because none of the information can be used against you. Because no one can be forced to be a witness against themselves and since the agent is conducting an investigation, that information that he collects in the course of his investigation without a warrant isn't admissible in court. This is all you have to say the ticket goes away. But that's not the information that I'm here to deliver, may I continue? If there is a fear or threat of arrest, nor any type of incarceration, nor detention, nor the relinquishing of any property by force, you simply say that I do demand the presence of my lawful counsel. They will ask well what's the name of your attorney? Oh that's simple, my attorney is the law, and since you claim to be enforcing the law, I have the right to have the law present, and to rely on the law concerning your actions. Now if it's a contract that you are here to enforce the terms of please state so clearly and then allow my counsel of record, otherwise known as, the law, an opportunity to be heard. Ladies and gentlemen they will pretend and make it appear that they perceive this to be one of those sovereign citizen gimmicks, and you will simply say gimmick or not sovereign or not. Are you telling me that I don't have the right to, counsel of choice? And are you not enforcing the law? Well do I not have a right to have reliance on the law? Can you show me any law that says that I cannot use the law for guidance? For instructions? For consideration? For advice? Do you guys not have a phrase known as, legal advice, should not legal advice be based on, the law? Well that simply means that I, gimmick or not, have the right to have the law presence as my counsel of record and until then you cannot force me to say a thing in order to surrender any rights. Without my, without my counsel being present, as that would be a violation of due process of, wait for it. Wait for it, the law, would it not? The reason why this works, is the courts are well aware that they are not enforcing law, they're enforcing what's known as evidence of law. Ladies and gentlemen, evidence of law is not, the law. The law, is the law. But what you all do not understand, is that since 1933, the law has been martial, they can never admit that, nor can they deny you your right to counsel of choice. Doesn't matter how anyone thinks of it being a gimmick or not. Not even a Supreme Court can tell you that you don't have a right to have the law speak for you. For we all know that statutes are not law, for Congress did not write statutes, or referring to codes, ordinances, regulations, revised statutes, or any of the other junk that they claim people are in violation of. Remember, 
statutes, codes, regulations, and ordinances are simply evidence of law, prima facie yet that. That being the case, they only appear to be law but, are not the law. So when you demand the law, you kill all presumptions by saying you want the law to be present so you can rely on it for counsel. To deny you that's right is to deny you due process, which gets the case of return, even on this so-called gimmick and technical ground. As I told all of you, the information you just received helps in every given situation before anyone who claims that they have the authority to exercise control over you. The Constitution did not grant government any rights of jurisdiction nor control over the person. Go back and look, not a single constitutional amendment associated with the Bill of Rights, which is a restraining order and it is a permanent injunction against government from infringing nor abridging the rights of the people, which is a restraining order and it is a permanent injunction against government from infringing nor abridging the rights of the people, doesn't even matter if those people are slaves. Because the Constitution never gave government the right to exercise jurisdiction even over a slave, go back and reread the Bill of Rights, that is a limit on government power. Nothing in the Bill of Rights talks about the free man, nor a slave it says people and persons. We don't even see the word citizen until the 14th Amendment which is not part of the Constitution why not, because of the bridges the right to the people making them a subset. Don't take my word for it go and do your research and find a single constitutional amendment in the Bill of Rights that gives Congress the right to abridge the rights of the people to peacefully assemble, to their freedom of peaceful speech, the right for them to practice religion and what if their religion says that they cannot be a slave of man? Then government cannot interfere with that due process right. They also cannot sit up there and deny you your right to petition for redress, and if you do your petition in the form of requesting the law as your counsel of choice, and people can seek asylum in the law it is not illegal to say that I take refuge in the law, and remember the law in the United States is the common law. Don't believe me, go back and look at the Constitution again, and note when it says due process of law, there were no other laws one that was written. And that is the common law they know this the fact is they know that you people don't know it. Here's the other thing, if you're already going to jail what have you got to lose? Well, thank you all for listening, at least. Five of you are going to see the value and the information provided the rest of you are going to ignore it until you're in a situation and you're going to say what have I got to lose in here. Going to try it and you're going to notice there are going to be some friends and people telling you what you can and cannot do and you're going to simply say to them I'm sorry where's the law that says it I asked for it to be present you're trying to charge me with a statute where's the law that says that I have to. Again the point is simple, you are simply asking them to allow you the right to console a council which is the right to consult the law. If they are truly following the law there should be no problem. But alas, there is a huge problem. They are not following the law, they are not going by the law, and thus if they allow you to be represented by the law they know must follow the law, which most assuredly they will not remember to deny your right to counsel of choice is to deny you your right to freely choose and to subject you to a waiver of your right and you're going to let them know that I do not waive my right to counsel under any circumstances nor do I accept your appointment of counsel, a party who can only represent the interest of the court, to whom says things that I have no control over, I will never grant full power of attorney to anyone. Especially to an attorney, all powers of attorney will be limited, that will never change unless under the rest, nor coercion, nor fear, nor distress. Those of you who are legally wise, Mull it over in your heads and see if you can find anything to contradict what was just stated.